Welcome to video 2 on direct proportion. So example 3, the area A centimetres squared of a square is proportional to the square of its perimeter, P centimetres. So just to get our heads around that for a minute, we're looking at a square which is this side here. So the area relates to A and the perimeter relates to all the way around the outside. So if we're thinking there, to there, to there, to there. Okay. And we're interested in the square of its perimeter. So what we've got to do is we've got to first off find a formula for A in terms of P. So do the same thing as we did in the other example. A is directly proportionate to the square of P. So P square. So that's my initial formula. Now I'm just going to substitute in the values we're given. So A equals 4. So A is directly proportionate. Remember we can do equals K of P. P is going to equal 8 in this case. And remember we want to square it. 8 squared. Now we need to find K. So, let's square the 8, gives me 64, okay, area stays the same. So how do I, what do I times k by okay, um, to make 4? In this case it's, it's quite a lot bigger, uh, so we're going to get rid of k, do it algebraically, by, remember that's a time sign there, so we're going to do the opposite and we're going to divide by 64. We're going to divide by 64. So we've got 4 divided by 64 equals 0 0.625. And that's going to be the value of k. Now if I need to write the formula, as it says at the top there, formula of a in terms of k, I need to use the k value. So my formula is going to equal... A equals 0 0.625 times P. And that's my answer. Example 4. Y is proportionate to the square of X. So I'm just going to take that first sentence there. So Y is directly proportionate to the square of x. Yeah, we're going to convert that to the next stage by putting the k in. Remember, that's going to change to equals k to x squared. So we've got our formula to start with. Find a formula for y in terms of x. To be able to get the formula correct, we need to work out again the value of k. Every one of these is following the same process. So y equals find k. Oops. Let's just rub that out. Um, when y equals 60, x equals 6. So 60 and 6 squared to find k. Remember that's being times. So 6 squared is 36. So I'm going to divide by 36 to do the inverse. And that's going to give me k. So 60 divided by 36 is going to give me 1.6666 recurring. Now that's not a very nice number to use in relation to writing down as a decimal. So I'm going to leave it in a fraction form. If that was as a fraction, it would be one and two thirds. Okay. So 1.6 recurring or one and two thirds. So just writing off the 
formula. So A, my answer would be Y equals one and two thirds of X squared. Okay, going back up, we're going to look at B. Find Y when X equals 4.5. So I'm going to use the formula we've just written. So y is directly proportionate to x squared. y equals 1 and 2 thirds of x squared. That was the formula we found from before. And we want to know what y is when x equals 4.5. So what does y equal 2 thirds times 4.5? Yeah, I'm going to use the value that's still in the calculator up top from what we did before. And I'm going to times it by 4.5. And that gives me 7.5. So y is going to equal 7.5. So my answer to b, y equals 7.5. And finally c, Find a value for x for which y equals 135. And again, I'm going to try and do that alongside of this one so we can see what's going on. So y equals 1 and 2 thirds of x squared when y equals 135, 1 and 2 thirds of x squared. So remember I've got to try and get x on its own. So, we're going to do Get rid of the 1 and 2 thirds. Remember that is times in the x squared. So I could divide by 1 and 2 thirds. 1 point. So I'm going to do 135 divide by 1 and 2 thirds. And that gives me 81. And that's going to equal my x squared. And the final stage, to get x on its own, I've got to square root my x squared. Square root x squared gives me x. So if I square root 81, 9 times 9 is 81. So my x value is going to be 9. Going up for my final answer, C, X is going to equal 9. On to example 5. The mass M in kilograms of a solid cube made from lead is proportional to the cube of length L centimetres of an edge. So again, try and imagine what's going on. We've got a solid cube and the mass of it, the weight of it, if you like, is in kilograms. And it's just taking the values as it tells me in the question. M is directly proportionate to L equals K of L. Exactly the same process. 
and now we're just going to substitute in the values 0 0.2 and m is 90 so 90 equals k times 0 0.2 if we can try and find the value of k remember as before just do the opposite divide by our value for L in this case on both sides that's going to cancel just leaving me K and I've got 90 divided by 0 0.2 and that's going to give me 450 so my answer to A is going to be a formula for M in terms of L M is equal to 450 multiplied by L On to question B. Find the value of M when L is equal to 0 0.3. So we're going to use the formula that we started with. M equals 450 of L. And we want to find M when L equals 0 0.3. So this one's quite straightforward, just a straightforward sum, 450 times 0 0.3. In this case, M is equal to 135. So my answer to B, M equals 135. And finally for C, Find the value of L when M equals 2000. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. So we've got an extra level of difficulty in here with the round into three significant figures. But we'll do the same thing. Start with the same formula. M equals 450L. We're going to substitute in the value given. So when M equals 2000, what does L equal? Okay, to get L on its own, remember that's times in it. So do the opposite and divide. Divide by 450. 2000 divided by 450 gives me 4.4444, 4.4 recurring. So 4.4444 equals L. And if I'm going to do it to three significant figures, I need three digits that are not a zero. So, one, two, three, put the line there. What effect does the four have? It is going to round it down in this case. So my answer would be L equals 4.44. Four. So finally, my last answer will see L equals 4.4423 significant figures.